Hello, Kids Cook Real Food, and welcome to a special edition of the Healthy Parenting Connector, where, as always, my goal is to connect you, parents who really desire to raise healthy kids in mind, body, and spirit, with the experts who have the information you need. This interview was originally conducted as part of my Pep Club membership, my Picky Eating Playbook members area. Our guest today is Danny Lebovitz from Kid Food Explorers. She is amazing on Instagram. She does all the cute stuff, but also is like really a critical thinker and talks parents through how to be incredibly intentional about teachable moments. That's what we're talking about today, capturing those teachable moments and helping your kids learn to explore their food with, of course, the goal of helping them build a better relationship with food, right? That's always our goal here at Kids Cook Real Food when we talk about those picky eaters, those selective eaters, people who have preferences, right? We want them to engage with their food, to encounter their food in all sorts of different ways so that they can have a good relationship with that food. My friends, here's Danny. So you have a great philosophy on connecting kids with their food. Let's start out with just like introduce yourself, your background, and why you love teaching kids about food. And then we'll jump into some exploration (laughs) activities. That's like eight syllables, Katie's challenge today. (laughs) Absolutely. Thank you. So uh, my name is Danny, and I'm actually a mom of three. My girls all have birthdays this month, and they will be two, four, and six. We're recording this in November. And so they keep me really busy, but I professionally, I'm a registered dietitian. I have a master's in health communications, and I have two specialty credentials in sports nutrition and diabetes education. But my passion is helping families explore new foods together and learning more about what we do uh, at least six times a day. Well, okay, at least three times a day, maybe six times a day, but 20 upwards of 20 times a week is eating meals together and instead of forcing our kids to try new foods, thinking about clever and creative ways uh, besides getting them in the kitchen and cooking with them, but clever and creative ways to get them building confidence and competence around new food. And I love to do that as a teachable moment. So my way of making teachable moments is for my younger kiddos is to include sensory exploration. I have a kiddo who has some sensory challenges. So that's been a really fun way to connect with her. And my most favorite is using STEAM activities. So you might be familiar with the word STEM. So STEM is science, technology, engineering, art, or um, engineering, um, and math, but I always add the fifth word letter in there, which is art. Uh, So I say STEAM instead of STEM. And there are some uh, people who think that A for arts has nothing to do with STEM, but I beg to differ because for example, if you are hoping your child is going to go into, for uh, example, engineering or something like that, well, they need those STEAM or arts skills because if they're going to create something to build, they first have to have an idea and they might want to sketch that artistic ability. And so I think that bringing the A into STEAM not only connects more with our kiddos uh, ages two to 12, because it's something that often interests them, but it's also something that is a skill and tool that they can use throughout their lives. Love it. I love that. And again, so creative. We were just talking before we hit record about cranberries. And so let's talk about cranberries. If you're watching this right away in December, cranberries are on sale. Go get some. You can <laughs> freeze them to cook with. I also I always do every December, but they're kind of a December food too, as far as maybe not cranberry sauce, but like cranberries in things. So what do you do with kids, Danny, to help them experience or get exposed to cranberries? Absolutely. So there are so many fun things you can do with cranberries besides cooking, which I would highly recommend that you get them in the kitchen and learning to explore and cook with them. But let's say that we want to build some confidence around cranberries before we even get in the kitchen or around the table. And that's sort of where my expertise comes in. So there's some interesting things to know about cranberries. And I'm actually going to share with you a page from one of my encyclopedia books. Um, So the first thing that I like to do when I'm exploring with my kiddos is introduce uh, my kids to a new food with my books. And this is helpful, especially with parents who 
don't necessarily have an idea of where to start because it might spark something in your own imagination of what you can do. So one of the fun facts about cranberries is that they actually bounce when they are ripe or ready to eat. When they're spoiled, they don't bounce. And the reason why is because they have this um, air pocket, this four part chamber. And so um, this fun fact in here talks about cranberries were rolled down a short flight of stairs for selection of good cranberries. And so uh, they bounce like little rubber balls. So I actually had my kids bouncing cranberries down the stairs, which is a food exposure, right? They're touching it, but they're playing and letting it bounce down the stairs. And it's an invitation for exploration and a conversation about cranberries. The other thing you can do is you can put it in a bowl of water. A sensory activity is just having them clean the cranberries. Um, another thing that they'll notice is that if the cranberry is good, it will rise to the top because of those air pockets. Science, right? And you, it opens an invitation for a conversation about those air pockets. You can even cut it in half and dissect it to look at them. But the cranberries that fall to the bottom of the bowl, they don't have the air pockets. Those ones are not so good to eat. So that's where I would start. Now, if you have a kiddo who's really interested in art, something you might like to try with cranberries is, um, and I'm sure you've seen this before, so it's not super original, but stringing them so that you can use it as a decoration around the house. And they don't spoil and it's super easy and it's super festive. They don't spoil. Do they just kind of dry out? They'll dry out. I mean, they'll spoil in, in a month or so, but they won't. I mean, how long are you going to have it up yeah, for? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so fun. And so you could put like popcorn and cranberries and do a little pattern. Totally. Actually, they also make uh, for a great addition if you have like a glass base that you want to put some flowers in or something. It looks so pretty when you put some cranberries at the bottom of your base, have your kids pour in some water and put some flowers in. So you've just had a whole hands-on experience with cranberries, but nowhere did you invite them to eat it, which means that when they see it again around the table, they may be curious to try it. Mm, that's great. So when you explore with your kids, the end does not include an invitation to eat ever or? Not necessarily. Sometimes it does. So particularly when I'm doing like cooking exercises and or um, exploring with um, in the kitchen, they'll often start putting things in their mouth without an invitation, which is why, you know, I think cooking is such a great way to invite kids to explore. But really, I think this is this is the difference between cooking um, or having kids in the kitchen or offering food at the table and a lot of the work that I do. Mm -hmm. So yes, my end goal is that I want my children to eventually sometime in their life, be willing to explore and taste this food that I am interacting with them. But it is not my intent with each individual activity. So for example, an activity that I love to do that's specifically focused on taste testing is something like using your five senses. I actually have, um, actually I'll share another. Um, this is one of my favorite resources that I have and these are food explorer placemats. And so, for example, um, do you like broccoli? I do most of the time, but raw broccoli is not exactly my favorite. Okay, it's perfect. just plain. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So you have a preference and you are an adult and you have the ability to say, I like broccoli, but this particular way to eat broccoli is not my favorite. And so something that we do with the, in the, in the, moment that we're trying to have children learn to feel confident in taste testing something, that's what we want to do. We want to skill build. And so you can do specific activities that may encourage taste testing more. And that's, that's an activity. For example, you could, um, I don't, I like raw broccoli, but I don't like steamed broccoli. So so what you can do is you can get the same, this is great for variety. So like, let's say you got two different varieties of apples and you could explore which one you liked better. Um, this is great if you wanna maybe compare two different vegetables like broccoli and cauliflower. But I'd say the way I use this most often is the same food prepared two different ways. Mm. And so I might have steamed broccoli and my absolute favorite, which is roasted broccoli. And my whole family, loves roasted broccoli because it's 
has such a nice crisp consistency and the oil and the little salt sprinkle really bring out those nutty flavors. It's so good. And so what we would do in this particular instance is we would use our five senses to explore them and find out what we like or what we don't like about them. I think a lot of parents um, discover their kids say, oh, I don't like this. I don't like that. And then they kind of give up on that food. Mm. But my goal is to empower kids, not only outside of the table, but also within the table to be able to articulate and communicate their likes and their dislikes. So one of my other resources, and I'm sorry, I just feel like it's naturally giving me these ideas to flow into is this book. It's called 101 Descriptive Words for Food Explorers. I actually wrote this for when my daughter was three and I needed a way for her to be able to tell me about her likes and her dislikes. And so this book is all based on visuals. So you can see all the pictures and have an idea of what they actually mean. So I, I find that parents often use the same words over and over again, and we're sort of lacking in some of our, our descriptors. But when we can build up our descriptive words about food, we can help our kids learn about their taste buds and their uh, flavor and texture preferences. So then instead of just saying, I don't like broccoli, mm. well... I don't really like broccoli prepared this way, or I'm still exploring broccoli prepared this way. I really don't like the mushy and squishy mm -hmm. texture, and it's got a really big flavor, but I love when it's when it's roasted and it's crispy and it's a little bit salty, and I hear the crunch in my ear, and it smells really good. It smells like um, fresh cut grass or whatever it is, and so really building up your kids with hands-on food exploration around the table should be not about um, forcing them to taste test. It should be about building autonomy. So even when we do that uh, taste testing activities, I don't require them to taste it. They can use other four senses to explore even if they're not ready to eat it yet. Such a good example. So important for all of us to hear. So we've talked about cranberries. Mm -hmm. A little bit about broccoli and then in general, how we want to look at food. Uh, another in-season food in the winter is citrus. Sometimes oh, that's an easy sell for kids. Sometimes it's not. How would you explore a, a citrus fruit? Well, I really love this question in particular because there are so many citrus varieties. Mm -hmm. And I think that this is such an easy invitation to explore the wonderful world of citrus by taking your kiddos to the grocery store. And it could be as simple as noticing that all of those fruits are in the same family. They're all sure. in the citrus family. So you could identify not only things that are very obvious, like uh, a grapefruit, or an orange, different orange varieties. Um, maybe you could get your hands on an ugly fruit um, or maybe a mandarin or what is the difference between, for example, a mandarin and a clementine. And so there's mm. this whole interesting family tree about how the different citrus varieties were created. I actually, I have a free printable in my resource library um, that kids can dissect a, um, a citrus fruit and I'm trying to so find it quickly, but, and then use it to label the different parts of, I can't find it quickly, the different parts of a citrus, um, a citrus fruit. And actually um, in my, in my fruit encyclopedia book, it teaches you about the different types of fruits. So actually citrus are all Hesperidium fruit and what is a hesperidium and maybe we can look at the differences we can peel a clementine versus an orange and yeah. see what we notice that's similar or what is different we can put on our investigative hat where I have I have a here we go I love to offer exploration and a little bit of fun oh, nice. so that we can make it a little bit silly and I'm going to tell you another really this is this is actually where I start with my if we are getting in this food exploration mindset yeah we put on the we really are transitioning our our and reframing our mind so we are putting on our food explorer hats we are going into this wonder mindset and we are not whatever child you are today we are this 
a better version of ourselves as food explorers. And what we do <laughs> is we put on our food explorer hat. I'm going to show you my kids' um, food explorer hat. And what we say is we are in search of delicious. So this is my boring adult food explorer hat, but uh. this is one of my, my kiddos food explorer hats. So this is another free printable, but basically we, we transition our minds and we get into this food explorer mindset where we are curious about what we are going to learn about. And so it's not our typical, I don't like this, I don't like that. We're here to investigate all of the foods that we are learning to explore, whether we're just simply walking to the grocery store or whether mm -hmm. your child says, hey, can we try to, to explore at home? And then we slice open a grapefruit and we slice open um, an orange or we try and peel them and notice that one is easier to peel than the mm -hmm. other or the different flavors and the different textures or the different sizes of the little juice filled sacks. Sure. So much. You could do that with any number of foods, you know, especially fruits. What about, what about vegetables tend to be a harder sell to kids. Do you have any winter vegetable ideas for us? Oh yes. One. Uh, okay. Last fall, this was a big deal in my house. Mm -hmm. So I wanted my kids to learn to explore fennel. So it's not a very common veggie. Mm -hmm. It's not one of my favorite veggies, but just because I don't like or it's not that I don't like it at all, but just because it's not one of my favorites doesn't mean that we shouldn't still explore it. And good for you. Sort of a fun thing to do, right? When when something is not your favorite, you can even say to your child, I don't love this fruit or this vegetable, but I'm gonna explore it with you because I wanna learn to like it or I wanna learn to see if my taste buds have changed and if I like it now. And so the very first way I introduced my kids to fennel was I got this giant fennel from the store. It's It was huge. It had the full stock. Yeah. And you know, I wish I had one in my fridge. I would grab it, but I know. they're, they're uh, fun this looking. Is, well, this is a picture from my book. Here we um, go. So this is yeah. what it looks like when it's grown. And actually it's a really interesting vegetable because you would think because of all the layers, it's a bulb, but it's actually not. Um, the parts that we eat are the stems and the leaves and they grow above ground. So they it's kind of an ground. interesting classification and fun fact for you but I got this giant fennel so it sort of looked like this and yeah. what I did was I put googly eyes on it with like some putty and then I, I have these like fake doctor glasses and I put the fake doctor glasses on it and then I put it in a baby doll stroller I have oh. a video on my uh social media from like la from last year of them playing with this. So I had it just like waiting by the front door for when they came in and they lost their minds. Like, they're like, what is this? It was a fennel baby. I had this invitation to play with a fennel, it had nothing to do with eating. Oh, wow. They absolutely loved it. Um, I am not exaggerating at two weeks, this, it like they would, they took this fennel, they would take naps on the couch with it or watch shows with it on the couch. They and it's really, a bit aromatic. I mean, you kind of, you can kind of smell that. it. Yes. So, and they liked that. That was, that is another part of why this exposure is so brilliant mm -hmm. because it has sort of an anise um, scent to it. So if you're not familiar with that, it's like a licorice kind of yeah. flavor or smell. And so, you know, they're like, snuggling it with it on the couch it was black and blue it looked like it was like beat up I I should just share a photo with you so that you can like post it oh in here gosh. um but I have the funniest pictures of my kids with this like black and blue funnel so anyway so fine and so other that was one big hit but another activity so you didn't eat did, that one because it had been through a lot if I'm hearing you're you right no I I cleaned it I I removed the pieces that had oh. seen better days and some of the center was still good so we were oh. able to like roast that I did oh, not nice. use that in our raw fennel salad that we made together because that wouldn't have gone over very well but it was it was good roasted and they actually they actually explored it. I think they liked it. Okay. I roasted it with olive oil and some Parmesan. And so mm -hmm. it had like a nice crisp edge. Um, but um, other activities we did is I cut off the fronds. So the fronds are the wispy um, stems and we did some paintings with it. And so Ooh. we did fennel frond paintings um, and they really enjoyed that. That's where arts come in. Uh, and I'm trying to think what else we did, but I think, I think that gives you a really good idea of yeah kind of out of the box things uh, that you can do 
to explore food that is is just through play and through uh, through the eyes of a child. Really, mm -hmm. this is this is what I say about food exploration. Each child is unique. Each child has different taste buds and different preferences, and each child likes to play differently. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if I offered a baby doll of fennel to a child who has zero interest in playing with baby dolls, that would not be a winning uh, uh, invitation. Sure, right? sure. Um, but my girls love baby dolls. My girls love art. And so you know, thinking about how you can bring a food in to play or explore in a way that interests them. So if you have a child who asks a lot of why questions, mm -hmm. well, why not foster that? Well, why, you know, why does the peel of the orange have a different color or have a different scent or um, what, why is there a different amount of sections of the different citrus? And so then you can explore and, and look at those individual factors together in the way that interests your unique child. And I think, I think that's the key. It, there's never a one size fits all answer. Everybody has their own interests and finding what your child may be interested in as you engage them outside of the table to get them interested, perhaps once you get to the kitchen. Nice. Well, I feel like I don't even need the wrap up question. Like that was just such <laughs> a beautiful, like tying a bow on it. Bottom line is there are no wrong ways to explore food. If you bounce the orange, go for it, <laughs> and, then, go for it. and pull apart the cranberry, right? Like if your kids are exploring, if you're keeping it positive, if they're having, and you know, a fun mm -hmm. time, ideally, but if they're let getting it be exposure some to child foods, let led, be. led play, and mm. even in the kitchen, you know, while they're while they're cooking, it's it's okay. You know, I'm I'm a I hate food waste, but mm -hmm. I I also would challenge somebody who says, "Well, that's wasting food." I'm sorry, but if your child is interacting with the food, even mm. if it doesn't get to be eaten, if it's a small portion, that is an investment, just like you might invest in crayons and paper right. and any any other material. Well, yeah. why not think about something that you eat that you're trying to help your child explore as that kind of resource too, and, and giving them some autonomy and ability to learn about that food before you even offer it at the table. It it helps them feel more confident and competent around it. And if they decide they don't want to eat it now, that's okay. They okay. they don't have to eat. And one last tip I would give is even it, it's pressure to eat is an easy way to get children to pull away. Mm -hmm. So I like to encourage people to be cool moms and say, oh, do you want to try this? Or it's here if you want to try it and leave it at that. And if yeah. they decide not to, that's fine. But things you can do to help is one, model. So enjoy it yourself. You can talk about it very nonchalantly. Like I'm really, I really like this because of X, Y, Z. You can offer it again. Um, but the number one thing you don't wanna do is say, you need to try one bite. Because when we pressure those bites, that's an easy way to get your kids to kind of put on the brakes and, and it's not about their choice anymore. So just keep empowering, keep it fun and let them play their way. That was so perfect. And so awesome. Yeah. We call it the poker face <laughs> and kids eat real food. Oh, I love now, that. Where can people hear more from you, Danny on Instagram blog and your books? Yes. Yeah, so um, I'm on Instagram at kid.food.explorers. I have an Amazon page uh, that has all of my uh, food education books. There's some more behind me. Uh, and then I have an extensive free resource library called the Adventurous Eaters Vault on my website. It's free. You just put in your email address and there's almost two dozen resources for playful activities for kids. And there's also specific resources for parents. Yay. Thank you so very much. This is super helpful. So I appreciate and it. Yeah. And even, I mean, it gives me ideas, even, even yeah. for the bigger kids, you know, you might not be like as I guess, specific with the bigger kids, but even just the conversations, the pulling apart, the comparisons, it's good for our brains too. We parents well, need to rub some brain cells together every so often. 
you know, older kids really love the scientific method. And if you're, mm. if you're not familiar with the scientific method, it's basically, you know, asking a question, making an observation, testing it out, and then really exploring it. And I also have a free printable that teaches you how to do that. Um, so I think that is a really great way to get your, your older kids involved and see what they discover. Plus, there's Google and Google can help them answer yeah. all sorts of questions. But first they have to make observations and have a question to answer. See what I mean? Danny is such a fantastic resource. I strongly encourage you to follow her on Instagram because it will definitely give you nuggets to chew on, not chicken nuggets, thought nuggets to chew on about feeding our kids and thinking about our kids' relationship with food and heck, our own relationship with food as well. She does a fantastic job with the thinking and also a lot of the presentation. She is, she's just a great resource. And I know that this will not be the last time that we have her integrated into things like our No More Picky Eating Challenge, which by the way, we run regularly. So tap links wherever this video is shared to see if one is upcoming and register, it's free. Probably won't be the last time we see her in our pep club, our picky eating playbook membership, and potentially, you know, she might be one of those elite few that we invite back here on the Healthy Parenting Connector. I'm Katie Kimball for the Healthy Parenting Connector and Kids Cook Real Food. Been great being with you today. Try some of those ideas that Danny shared, and I will see you next time with more experts to help you raise those healthy kids intentionally.